Jamie from Inky and Scrappy back with our Let's Start Stamping series. Today we're going to talk layering stencils and stencil paste or lunar paste. I haven't decided where I'm going with this one for sure yet. I'm thinking we're going to do the stenciling today and then I might come back next week and finish up the backgrounds. A lot of times if I'm stuck on something I will do backgrounds and then come back later and do the rest of the card or you know I like to have I have a stash of backgrounds and why do I say this because well you know it happens like if I, I'm not just inspired today or whatever I'll you know sometimes I just want to try something different but the stenciling I showed my sister-in-law how to do the layered stencils, so I thought it would be fun to show you guys how to do some stencil layering and going, you know, going from there. Really, you can do some gorgeous stenciling and just add a sentiment and call it good. You don't need to do coloring or any of those other things. We've kind of touched on some of the ink blending on stamped images with like the coordinating stencils, which I did pick up one set so it'll be coming up in my um, brewing up creativity class I think that's what I'm gonna do for September is stencil like stamping stamped images with stencil coloring I don't know where I put it my desk is kind of a mess at the moment <clears throat> I don't know why it was not me so to start I'm just gonna show you so there's multiple different ones to do I'm gonna start with Lawn Fawn's fall leaves background stencil which is a two stencil set there are some more that have three or four stencils and they all work the same it's just one layer after the other some of them coordinate with stamps I know we've done we did the the big flower one that's a stamped image and then you have the layering stencils this is just the stencils no stamping involved it's just the layering stencils but I thought it would be fun to kind of do the layering stencils and then maybe do some paste over the top and because we're doing some paste over the top, they are gonna take some time to dry, so keep that in mind. I'm also not using Bristol Smooth today. You are more than welcome to use Bristol Smooth, but anything that ink blends well on, I'm gonna use Ohuhu mark blend, Marker Blending Paper. I don't like it for the alcohol marker blending. I don't like it as, I should say, I don't like it as much as Express It cardstock, so I use mine for ink blending. I love how it ink blends. Uh, keep in mind that certain papers don't absorb the inks very well and they're going to look different. So if you're mixing and matching, keep in mind to try to use the same paper for the same project, I guess, when if you're doing the same thing. I say that because I did one recently that did not um, use this because I just grabbed whatever was on my desk not realizing that maybe I should have paid attention because I may have used two different papers and it picked up the ink differently. And then it was a, it was a movable one, so you could see the, the greens saturated differently on each substrate. I hope that makes sense. Anyways, so to start with this one, we're gonna use the, the leaf one here. I'm trying to find. So usually I will mark tops at the bottom on them. As you can see, there's like overlay. That's not the right way. So sometimes I don't have them the right way. Let's see. Still not right. Still not right. I'll find them eventually. It's usually better to find how they go together beforehand. So if you see this one, you can kind of see how the layers layer up. So I'm gonna mark this so I know for future reference. Most, of, okay, not most, some of the companies have, and they might have them on here and I just can't find them. It happens. Okay, so it does say Lawn Fawn right there on both of them. So if you line up where the company logos are, you're probably going to find the correct way better. And keep in mind that's the way that they're meant to go together. It doesn't mean you have to use both of them. It doesn't mean you have to layer them that way. This one is gorgeous with just one layer of, you know, you don't need all the, well, this one maybe not, but this one, I don't know. This one's more of a two. There's some that you can do, like they have the Falling Heart one that you really only need one and you can make it work. So we're gonna start with this one. 
This one's kind of has, we'll say it has more leaves and more dots, right? So the dots are really berries. So the other thing with these is to line them up, kind of pick a spot on. If you have a grid mat, go with the grid mat. You can pick up a really cheap grip, like a grid grip map, mat, map, mat, mat. Ugh, can't talk today from like the Dollar Tree. Um, even like these ones will work. They kind of have some sticky. Maybe we'll use this today. So it kind of has some sticky. It'll hold your paper in place. If it's big enough, it'll also hold your stencil down a little bit, especially if you're not working with a magnetic media mat. The other thing that you can get is uh, there's make art stations, which are magnetic as well. Those will work. But ultimately for this one, I'm going to use this just to help guide me on my stenciling. Has in, it's going to hold my paper kind of in place. Not really. I mean, my paper is going to move because it's not secured down. But it's going to help guide me on my stencil placement. So I cut this one big so I can cut it down after the fact. So don't worry about that sticking up there. I think I have six inches, so I have a good half inch to play with, but you could definitely, you know, move this up so it's on the line if you want that full. Okay, we'll do it so it's that way. And then I'm just gonna stick it down here. So if you don't have a sticky grid mat, tape works, either washi tape or, washi tape works just fine to kinda stick it down. So I'm gonna stick it to my surface for inking, that type of thing. The other thing you can do is stick down the back of your piece of paper, put some, either curl a piece up and put it on the underside or using your double-sided tape runner and put just a little chunk on the back. We'll do that. So I'm trying not to use the magnet because you guys don't have the magnet mat or some of you don't have the magnet mat. So I'm just going to put a little bit on there. It will come off of my mat with a little bit of rubbing alcohol or goo gun. Let's see if we're fairly centered there. So that's going to keep my piece of paper from shifting and moving around. A lot of times I like to move my paper with how I'm currently blending. So to start with this one, we're going to actually use some distress oxides, which are that pigment and dye fusion. And it's going to I think we'll work all right with this one. So let's go, I want to go a little bit lighter. Let's go dried marigold and do I want two, three, two colors? Whoa, that's like not what I was looking for. Okay, um, let's do the fired brick for my red. So we'll do an orange and a red. Do we want to do a yellow in there? Let's do the scattered straw in the yellow. Okay. You don't need to use that many colors. You could definitely keep it to two or three, whatever you want. So for this one, I'm going to do three and just kind of play with it a little bit. Go from there. You could start with, okay, I should start with yellow. Why do you start with yellow? Yellow is the lightest color. It's more likely to get contaminated by your other colors. So if you don't start with your yellow, you just have to be very careful about not getting the red brush into your yellow or not getting your yellow you're gonna have to clean your stencil off before you go to the red or go from red to yellow or orange to yellow so you don't contaminate them i hope that made sense now for this one you can definitely pick and choose which which ones you want different colors just keep in mind you're going to get a little bit of overbleed. so let's do all of these in yellow you wouldn't have to be this picky. I just like the look of more colors. You could do it all in one color. You could do some ink blending on there. Um, I think I have all of those hit that one there. Okay. So I think that's it for my yellows. Well, it's going to have to be, right? I'm going to go to my orange next. So I usually try to work from my lighter color to my darker color. But I usually always start with yellow if I'm working on a rainbow. It's just kind of what what I do to help my ink pads not get too, shall we say, mucked up. Um, I want to keep the big ones red, I think. And we'll do some oranges there. 
and the little leaves aren't going to be as big of a deal so I'm going to kind of add some orange sporadically I try to you know make the color flow in the sense of there's a little bit of color here and there um, I think I need some orange down here and I'll hit the rest with some red so I'm bringing in that fired brick for my last one here I'm going to hit my big ones, making sure I hit anything that maybe isn't already colored in. Those ones. This style of blending brush for a stencil, I feel works the best, at least for this style of stencil. The blending foam ones have their place and they work well too. So, you know, it's really personal preference. So I think I have everything pretty much covered. I'll just double check this one. So I'm going to flip this up. It looks like I hit everything there. So I think we're good. So I'm going to set that one off to the side. And then I'm going to come in with this one. So you remember we had our little tick mark over there. We had lined this one up over here. You see how nicely those line up now? And let me throw that on there. So you you see where it's supposed to layer on top. So maybe this one should have been my first one because the leaves are going to... But truthfully, I do a better job lining those up when I do them this way. So now for this one, I can bring in different colors if I want. I could definitely bring in those same ones again. I think I'm going to bring in some peeled paint do some greens on this one and maybe a brown gathered twigs probably sounds like a pretty good option for this one you know because we're twiggy let's see uh, my brown brush so I have my brushes marked so these are my oxide brushes I use my oxide brushes in color family so I have I think the set of 24 so my green olive green I use with my olive green colors I have a bright green one that I use with my brighter like Kelly green colors like the John Deere tractor colors and then I have I think there's like four brown ones so like a mint one and some of the other ones they just kind of work well with those you know it, it kind of goes to color family I that way I don't have to wash my brushes I'm not a huge fan of washing my brushes I know some people wash them I'm not great about washing them so I think I'm going to do most of it green and then I'll come in and hit maybe the acorns with some brown and of course my twigs so let's see here that one. Oh, not that big one yet I think I have most everything we can hit that one with some brown okay so then I'm going to come in with my brown and do this one this one I'll hit that one a little bit that one and then I want to go and find my acorns on this one acorn twig spots I missed more spots I missed um, acorn there's just a little bit too much green there so I'll come in with a little bit and you can ink blend a little bit on those I don't usually rinse my brushes ever I will come in with a scratch piece of paper because I mixed there's ink sitting on top of my stencil and because I mixed this one I'm just gonna come in and kind of just rub it off you can see there were some like greenish brown tones in there my red I'm really not worried about mixing that orange in there because I really don't think you're gonna see it but if you're worried about that you can definitely I just use scratch paper and kind of just rub them off if I'm switching from a really dark yellow to a lighter yellow and I only have one yellow brush I will definitely you know rub it off to make sure that I'm getting most of that darker yellow out of my brush before I go into the lighter one I hope that made sense okay so for this one I'm gonna pull this one off and then you should have your gorgeous patterned 
paper that you just made, right? It's got some color variations. It's very, uh, you know, it's very fall, but it's got some gorgeous color combo combos in there. I'm going to rinse these off quick so I can do some pasting through them. So I put rubbing alcohol just in a little spritzer bottle. This is 90, I think it's 91% or 90% rubbing alcohol. You can pick it up at the drugstore or at Walmart in the, you know, where you find rubbing alcohol. It's just a higher concentration so it dries faster. And I just washed all my inky rags. I might have glittered some things this week and they got a little extra. So I'm just using a cheap flower cloth sack from, I think you can get them in a 10 pack at Walmart for under 10 bucks. And so see, it's clean. By using rubbing alcohol, you can reuse your stencil right away and you don't have to wait for the water to dry because the alcohol is just gonna evaporate off of it, which is kind of nice. And if you clean them right away, it just saves a little bit of time. But a lot of times I will throw mine off to the side and then I just run them into the bathroom under the water and I have a bowl or a, a stencil holder. It's really like a bottle holder, like when you wash stuff. Let's see, which one do I wanna do? I could do the little berries, I suppose, knowing that they're little berries. Um, let's do, I'm, I'm uh, trying to think which one I wanna do here. Let's do the berries. So I have some lunar paste here. This one is Love Struck. Oh, I could do gold too, that would be pretty. Maybe I should do gold. Hmm. Oh, decisions, decisions. Which one? Gold or slippery when wet? I like both options, really. Let's let's go with. Let's bring this one back in. We're gonna line our stencil back up. See how easy it is to line it back up once you're done with it. And it's nice and clean, so I don't have to worry about color transfer. Let's see here. For this, you're gonna want. I'll just bring my whole bucket here. A spatula of some sort. It doesn't have to be a spatula. This one I think I picked up at the Dollar Tree. You don't need to use a spatula. You can use a flat scraper style thing. Uh, the little, these are just putty knives or artist knives. This one's probably not the greatest. Anything that has like the little, where you have a little bit more control with that that handle part. I like the metal ones, you know. They have a variety out there. There's a big stencil wiper from, I think, scrapbook.com has like a big one, but there's kitchen tools that you can use, like the scrapers that you get with your, I'm trying to think, oh, it'll come to me, your Pampered Chef stuff, like those brown flat ones that are like this big, it's just a flat scraper, a credit card or an old, an old gift card will work, just, you know, going over it to kind of make a flat. You just want something plasticky and hard that's gonna work to scrape it off. That's basically what you're using all of your scraper style tools for. So, well, let's do, let's see if I can get, ooh, that one's like a bright, alrighty, bright cherry colored. I think I'm gonna use this one and hope that I can kind of pick and choose where I'm going with it. So I'm gonna start with a small amount because my little holes are really small here. And I'm just gonna go kind of over them. I don't wanna push, I wanna push down, but I don't wanna push like underneath. I don't want it to spread too far. I don't know if that makes sense or not. And because I already have inked these, I'm gonna be careful not to get it back in the jar because I don't wanna mix, I don't wanna color it. This is more important probably when you have white paste or a yellow, a lighter paste, and you don't want that paste to get contaminated with other colors. I like to mix my pastes a lot of times I think we're good there, and let's bring in 
The other thing with paste is cleanup. You're gonna wanna, sorry, I'm bending to get a paper towel. You're gonna wanna clean your paste off right away. You don't wanna let it sit. You don't want it to dry on your stencil and or your, your brush. Your brush, uh, your palette knife. That's the word I was looking for. Don't mind me. Oh, it's been a day. It's, yeah, it's all good. Okay. So for the gold, I'm just gonna put, hmm, maybe over these ones, like the centers of the leaves. So it's just gonna add a little bit of an accent. Maybe I should do, let me do the acorns on this one because the last, you know, the other side I hit them with the brown. So this way I'm hitting them with the gold. Do, 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 do and just kind of sporadically adding a little bit here and there. Now, if you wanna step it up, you can definitely, lunar paste are made to kind of mix together. So I'm gonna scrape these off a little bit. Let's try this, cause I haven't, I haven't really played with my lunar paste yet. Um, let's just kind of go and do a little bit here. All right, we're good. Quit futzing. You're gonna hate it if you futz. At least that's, oh, I missed that one. Okay, we're gonna come back in. Clean my brush up, clean my palette knife off, and we're just gonna hit that spot. I think I got the rest of them. Oh, I missed this one. Wow. Don't mind me getting distracted, not actually doing what I was starting to do. I'm gonna hit those since I didn't get them all the way colored in. I think we're good on that one. All right, I think we're good. So we're just going to peel and reveal after I screw the cover back on. Uh, paste. Paste can go bad. There's, you know, it, especially if you're in a drier climate. Here I have okay luck as long as I seal them tight. I do like to use um, an adhesive, not adhesive, uh, peel and store. Is it peel and stick and peel, peel and stick? saran wrap works all right so this i'm going to run to the bathroom and get it in water really quick usually i have you know i don't usually do this on camera so but let's look at this quick i'm going to peel i should have peeled it from the background i'll show you on the next one so we have a little bit of lunar paste on there it just adds a little bit to it and this one i will chop it down and i'll probably add a cute little sentiment to it and it's good to go it looks absolutely gorgeous all fall and can't tell I'm ready for fall can you it was either this or spooky ghost today so so there we have our first one let me go since I didn't bring you into the bathroom to show you the stencil when I wash it I usually just turn the water on kind of a a warmish temperature I use my little scrubby brush this is one you'd buy in the kitchen section it's got a little bit of soap in it I just get a little soap on it and then I just kind of brush over it Gently, because you want to be careful, especially if you have a lot of little stuff on there. But a stencil that's a little bit bolder, you know, you can press a little bit more. But that's, you know, really going to, I rub with my fingers first. And then to get everything off, I usually use this. I will say if you are cleaning your blending brushes. So I don't clean mine very often. This one's got, so I, this is like, I don't know, it's a brush head, but it's, it's really, it's a, makeup brush cleaner so you put this on your fingers you run this underwater with this and you just keep rubbing it until your water runs clean there's still going to be some in there now at this point you can either dry your brush this way or you can dry it this way if you dry it this way the color is going to kind of come towards the the tip if you dry it this way the color that's left in there will dry downwards it's personal preference I done them both ways I don't have a preference but if you're limited on your blending brushes that's how I this is how I do my class ones because I don't have separate ones for oxide and you know I don't have enough for oxides and dyes for classes so I wash my class brushes and that's just how I do it so it's it works fairly well if you can find yourself a little brush cleaner like this it works really good I'm trying to think the other thing that you can I mean you can do you just rub it on your hand, you know, water with your hand and then just keep going until 
it's not green and in this case it's not green anymore it takes a while if you're like me and you don't wash them a lot my class brushes don't take a whole lot of time because we really only use them for one class and there's a less amount of ink in them as you use them you're pushing ink further up into the bristles and so that's why if you use them a lot before washing them it takes a little bit longer to get them clean okay that was your hot tip 100 today I don't know if it was a hot tip or not but you know if you had questions that's you know that's my answer to your questions now for the mat you can definitely run the mat underwater in the bathroom as well like in your sink sorry I used the bathroom in your sink as well just make sure that you get all the ink out of your sink before it dries um, and the paste don't ask me how I know <clears throat> don't come over looking at my bathroom like somebody with purple blood got splattered in there purple sparkly blood anyways okay on to the next one I probably should have started with this one because this one's probably a little bit can I say well a little less involved when it comes to color combos and ink blending so I'm just gonna all right I'll do it the right way this one's gonna cover the whole thing I'm not gonna lie let's I'm gonna pull that off to the side because we've really not gonna need that I will add I think I got my tape off the back here so maybe oh look I cleaned it and it doesn't want to stick okay so for this one I'm gonna start with my stencil this is a water stencil this one I picked up at MFT I don't think they currently have it anymore at MFT. They do have it with Tailored Expressions because my sister-in-law just picked one up because I saw it and I was like, ooh, you want that because they're hard to find. Um, but I see that Tailored Expressions has them. So if that's one you're interested in, go for it. Um, let's go ocean or glacier. I'm trying to decide which one glacier might be. So I'm picking for this one you're going to want a dye based ink you could definitely use like a dye ink salvage patina any of your blues if you want purple water go for purple water if you want it to look like a draft it would probably very much look like a draft if you colored it brown and then came back in later with a yellow and kind of you know after you take it off and go with that yellow over the brown with a dye ink and you'll see the brown and the yellow and then you'll get that zebra print or not zebra giraffe print i can't talk today anyways it's an option right but you can also i've used this one for like desert dirt sand those types of things if you're looking for just a cool stencil but this one is it's called a water stencil that's what it's made for i'm going to have to stop and switch my camera okay I had to switch my battery so I didn't totally walk away so I cut this one down to six by six for my piece of paper it really doesn't matter I'm not going to use the whole thing this way I can just kind of line it up and go but ultimately and this one is a blue brush so it's probably going to have a little bit of blue left in it I'm not overly worried about it if you want to tape your stencil down here you can it, it's you know if it shifts a little bit I'm not overly worried about it but we're going to start with, I'm going to ink up my brush. I'm going to tap it just a little bit off on the side. Let me see if I had, you're not going to see it on this very good. All right, we'll go, we'll go with this one. Okay. I'm going to tap it just a little bit off on the side. I don't think my ink pad is overly juicy, but sometimes with those darker colors, they're really juicy and you'll get a definite like I just came down right there the other thing to do is to start off of your stencil and work onto it if you have issues with getting super dark areas or splotches on there when you start to re I don't know when you go off and come back on again and it looks like I'm doing nothing okay at least in my you know in my frame of view it doesn't look like it's putting a lot on there trust the process on this one I promise it's probably darker on there than you think because right now all you're looking at is basically that stencil which is darker and then your white paper that still kind of looks white 
Could have I gone with a darker color? Yes. But I didn't need to. Alright. So to me it looks like eh. It's not the greatest job, right? You got darker, lighter. This is fine. This is kind of what you want. And you're going to lift it up and you're going to see your pattern there. See how pretty it is. And it's meant to be just shifted. So, oh, this one is called Perfect Pool Water ST-141. I'm pretty sure this is an MFT one. Yep, MFT stamps. I'm pretty sure they don't make this one anymore. So I'm just going to line this one back up because my paper again is 6x6. Six six. It's going to line up perfectly with the edges. So I'm just going to shift it a quarter turn and I'm going to go again. I'm not worried so much on this style of stencil if I get the blotchies. Like it's water. It's supposed to have, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, right? Uh, let's go this way. And of course, making your piece of paper a little bit bigger than what your final, whoops, your final result is, you're going to get, you know, to pick and choose. Like, I don't like this section. Well, that's okay. You can pick a different section. You know, you strategically make your cut. I hope that makes sense. That's usually how I do it. I make it bigger than I need it. So that way I can come in. Because there's always a part, even me after doing it, how many years? Oh, I had an oopsie there. Or, oh, I went way too straight to paper with way too much ink and it's darker there and I don't like it. That's okay. That's where your either your image goes or, you know, you can cut around it. It's kind of why if you struggle, start from the outside and work your way in and it'll work. So this is my second layer. You see kind of how that water is developing. You see the lighter and the darker because where your ink has gone over twice, it's going to be darker. But where you haven't gone over it all yet, it's lighter. And so I'm just going to turn it again, a quarter turn, and we're going to go again. And this, at this point, to me, it looks like it's getting a lot darker. It just looks darker to me. I don't know if I moved. Did I? I brought it back to the same spot we were at earlier. Good, good gravy, child. I can't even demo properly today and I was off a little bit so I got some shadow ripplage going on over there that's fine okay all right let's try it again I was wondering why I wasn't getting a third layer it's all fun and games until you screw up no, it's fine I promise it's pool water it'll be okay Now, don't dip your ink, you know, don't accidentally put it in yellow because then it would be a no-go. Yellow pool water is not cool. Just saying. Sorry, I'm a five-year-old at heart. Okay. And a one more turn. And we'll ink this one up one more time. I've done, so I did a series back, I think it was two years ago. It was a lawn fawn one, but I did different styles of, because they didn't have this one anymore. And I couldn't, they didn't have, you know, another one on the market. And so I was like, well, how can you, so if you have an, a, stencil that really doesn't have a pattern if it's just kind of an abstract stencil it kind of works similarly I think I had one that was like a rose that I did and that one worked out all right anything that has like a, a funky pattern it'll work you just don't want it to be over the top okay so for this one you can come in with just your plain brush at the end especially if you still have some stark white so there's still some stark white where nothing really no ink ever touched the paper right because it's kind of however that stencil got moved and shifted you can flip it over you can you can keep adding layers if you want to this is plenty of layers for water in my opinion you probably could have stopped at three if you wanted to but you see how fun that is 
Now this one, you could definitely go over it with like some, I would go with that like a glitter. I guess we could do a glitter stencil paste on it. Do I want the stencil for the spray? Um, no, I don't think so. I'm just gonna add some of that Windsor & Newton iridescent watercolor mixed media. And this one is not Tim Holtz, so it's not gonna react like the Tim Holtz inks would. This one is just a regular dye ink from close to my heart, so it's it shouldn't run and bleed and react to water like the Tim Holtz ones will. So keep that in mind if you're gonna add some spray. You'll get some more, definitely some more texture with a spray on top of it if it's a distress ink. But this one's just kind of fun. I just added, so it's just got a glittery, glossy sheen over the whole top. So I think that's it for today. Um, we did some paste, we did some other stuff. And you can do paste totally through a stencil and call it good. You don't need to do anything else. Um, let's see, do I have, let me, let me go grab some supplies and I'll do one more that's just paste. I think it'll be fun. I made a mess, that's all I'm gonna say. Um, so I have some texture paste in metallic white. I don't know if this is the same as lunar paste. It looks a lot like lunar paste to me. Is it going to work the same as lunar paste? I don't know, am I gonna mix them anyways? Sure, why not? Um, I did cut my piece of paper. Uh, so I'm using a col solid colored cardstock on this one. This one is Sapphire from, um, 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 I'll think of it sooner or later. From close to my heart. Where are all of your papers from? Okay, because I'm gonna mix this one, I can't necessarily mix, put this back in my jar. Um, let's be careful on the touch here, okay. I just kinda wanna swirl them. This is new, I'm trying something new with you today. We'll see if it works. Um, I'll let you know how it dries when we come back next time. That's all I can say. So I love the look that I've seen some people do with their lunar paste and kind of mixing them. You get the fun swirls. But this one is just white, so that white texture paste metallic white. And then I'm using silver lining lunar paste. I'm mixing it on. This is the one that I said is from scrapbook.com. It's just a flat scraper. This style is going to be good for doing your whole sheet. I'm gonna come down from the top. I want it to cover all of it in one fell swoop. I hope that makes sense. I'm also going to tape that down so I don't have too much wiggle. Do I have enough on there for my whole stencil? I have no clue. We're just trying this. Let's see how it goes. It's gonna get mixedier, mixier, mixedier, mixier as we go down on the stencil, but you just kinda of wanna go over it one layer. I don't want to, I mix, I pulled up way too much. Okay. I'm going to try to fill in what I missed here. Keep in mind, I can definitely just kind of pick and choose later on. I can just make my, my thing a little bit lighter. I don't want to go too many times. The more you go over it, the more you risk pushing it out. I wanted a nice even paste. You are going to have some left. Um, you know, you can definitely go this way and fill in. Probably should have done that. Uh, fill in whatever maybe you missed with a smaller palette knife and go that route. But it gives you, you kind of want to keep your, your pressure even. I did have where it kind of bumped a little bit. It's okay. It's going to add a little bit more texture to it. It's not perfect. I'm okay with it. I'm just hoping for like a pearly white and gray mixture here. So we'll see what it looks like. So of course we have to pull this right away. So I'm just gonna pull straight up. I got a little bit underneath there, but not too bad. It's, you know, for the most part, it looks fairly good. So I'm gonna run that one to the sink again. And then you have that pearly essence. So you can see a little bit where this is silver, 
this is the white streak, the silver streak, the white streak, the silver streak. So I kind of kept it mostly there. You would definitely see this one more if you did some more colors with it. Um, you know, my brush is dirty. I could just do one more. This is not me trying to convince myself not to do one more. We're going to do one more. Ooh, I even have a pretty red one here. Let's see here. Let's, let's. I'm going to risk this and call it good. I'm going to spray this one with water. So it'll give me a little bit of time to get it to the. This would be way better if I'd uh, <clears throat> planned ahead. Not that I would ever do such a thing. Okay. All right. This one. I have a heart one. I just had it two seconds ago. Let's go in my binder. This is actually a cookie stencil binder I picked up on Amazon. If you are curious. Ooh, that one would be fun. The jelly beans would be fun. The dots. Here's the heart. I'm missing my second heart stencil. It's, I mean, it's, I'm not missing it. I used it and then I didn't put it back where it belongs. Okay, so for this one, let's go. We're gonna mix some colors here. We're gonna kind of do that. Let me rinse off. I don't wanna mix them, so I'll do some red. That one back on um between the colors i have let's do some gold i'm just gonna grab a different one. Oh, that's probably like way more than i need okay some red and some gold um jamie's lunar paste options are limited it's probably a good thing or we'd be here all day Ooh, i have this leftover silver and white let's throw that in there too okay so this is the fun of lunar paste i guess all right so i have just a hot mess on there right let's go i'm just gonna start and hope for the best Fill in your holes. That whole even pressure all the way across thing. Yeah, I struggle. I struggle hard. Okay, there we go. I think we got most of it. Let's come in with this one. We'll just fill in the little ones. This is why I really like the little one. I'm better at it. really mixed it probably way too much anyways all right let's pull this one up see what we have so because I went over it multiple times I got a little more seepage than I probably would like but ultimately it looks this place over here looks pretty good so I'll probably utilize that more than I'll utilize that that's kind of how that one goes okay I will be right back I'm gonna go wash everything up okay so everything I did is still wet probably mostly yeah so this one's still wet i'll come back next week and show you the end results of them for the most part you get see how we started with that red i really don't see any gold in here i mixed them too much i should have just done one a little bit more paste and one and done it this one is that cloudy sky one this one is a hero arts one it was like a two-pack of something this and some other pattern from Joann's this one is lawn fawns stackable heart one this one is oops MFT's I still have sticky on the back this one is MFT's water pool perfect pool water stencil shifted four times a quarter turn each time I know you can get a pool water one from tailored expression I don't know I mean they had it at the store in Stampin' store in Hutchinson so I'm guessing it's still available on Taylor's 
Expressions website, but I'm not positive, but other sites might have a similar pool water one, also known as draft pattern, just saying. Um, and then of course this one, which was Lawn Fawn's Falling Leaves background stencil, which was two stencils. We used multiple inks on it and got some cool looks with paste sporadically placed over the top. I really love this one the best. I'm not gonna lie. And so, you know, for paste, and stenciling, I like this style brush. Amazon has them fairly cheap and reasonable. I don't mix my dyes and my oxide brushes. Let's see, any other tips I can give you? Solar paste, I'm pretty new with solar paste, so I don't, you know, I don't play with it a lot yet. But paste in general, you're kind of going to get that look. I like doing paste through smaller stencils. You don't get the streakies, um, at least in my opinion. I'm not a, prof I'm a, prof you know, I don't like it when they don't all work. Uh, the textured paste metallic white I think is very similar to the lunar paste at least in consistency. It's both both of them are made by Ranger. Um, I don't know why one's not the other one. I have dyed that one at different colors. That's kind of why I picked that one up because I can make colors to coordinate with what I'm currently working on. Oh, I was pulling out backgrounds. So I said I do backgrounds, right? I just kind of play. And so this one was just an ink blended background. I added some stenciling over the top, some stamping over the top. This is definitely more of your mixed media style as with this one as well. So this one I just kind of used as a leftover. So it had some browns on it. It just kind of, it was one of those like scrap pieces that sits by my desk that I play with. Like, oh, I'll just add, you know, I might be doing this. So I'll add this or I'll add that. And then eventually it gets to this layer. Ooh, it's getting cloudy out. It's going to rain. All right. Anyways, before the storm starts, I'm going to holler off. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. You know, I will come back next week and probably make a card with this one and uh, this one.